This fat, slobbering, ponderous killer roamed through the books of a famous author, leaving death in his wake. But while millions followed his adventures with a morbid curiosity, how could they know he had stepped beyond the realm of fiction into life in The Devil's Creation? It is useless, John Wilde. A mere mortal like you can never destroy the lunk. John Wilde, a writer, stared at the manuscript, reading what he had just written, and a feeling of revulsion overwhelmed him. It was almost finished. Another book describing the bestial horrors of his own creation. The Lunk. Curse the Lunk. Why did I ever create anything as monstrous as that? The phone. I must be manning my publisher. Good heavens, man. Where is the rest of that manuscript? You're late. Very late. It's done. Except for the last chapter. Well, get it over with then, Wilde. Why, the Lunk is the hottest thing we've ever had in this office, and we can easily add two more books to our title list. No, I'm not going to write them. I can't. Not about the Lunk. See here, Wilde. I'm tired of that silly attitude of yours. Our contract calls for six more books about the Lunk, and I mean to have them. Curse him. Curse the Lunk. If only I could get rid of him. If I could... The thought suddenly took root, of course. That was the obvious answer. Why didn't he think of it before? I'll kill the Lunk off in the last chapter. I'll destroy him. Then I'll be rid of him. Once and for all. He started to type furiously. Now he had the Lunk where he wanted him. His breath began to come in short gasps, as if he were actually living the sequence. Then, suddenly, an eerie silence filled the room, and he stopped typing. He was aware of his flesh crawling in terror. Some... someone's in this room. Ah! The Lunk! Surely you're not contemplating murder, Mr. Wilde. I thought that that was my exclusive province. No, no, you, it, it can't be. Ha, <laughs> but I am, and very real as you'll soon find out. Millions follow my exploits and many already believe that I am a reality. Don't you see that you've already crossed the line between reality and fiction? I exist in the minds of many. A weakling like you can't murder me, the lunk. I will, I will, never. You will never write that last chapter. Keep away. Ah! <laughs> Only I can write the last chapter, and that will be when and where I please. Yes, I exist. Even this little knife you made me a present of exists. But perhaps you would like proof. No. Ah! Ha ha ha! Consciousness slowly returned to John Wilde, and in something of a stupor, he opened his eyes. Then he suddenly remembered the the lunk. He was here. He's gone. It, it must have been a dream. A nightmare. No. He was here. That proves it. I must destroy him now. It's him. Or me. Frantically, he dashed towards the garage. And the sound of soft, pattering footsteps was heard. His heart congealed in terror. How often had he described those steps? He's following me. He lunged for his car and with trembling fingers turned the ignition key. The vehicle roared off as if fleeing from the devil himself. My country place. I can finish the last chapter up there, yes. Finish it and destroy that monster. 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. And still he pressed on the gas pedal. But then he glanced into the rear view mirror and saw, he's, he's coming, but I'll lose him, I must. The car continued to speed along the road. Then suddenly, Wilde saw a vision materialize in front of him. Later, a battered figure dragged itself out of the shattered wreckage of the car. My arms, they, they feel as if they're on fire. They're broken, both my arms. Then the thought of what he had seen took complete possession of him. Forgotten were his arms and he began to run, thrashing his way through the heavy brush. He's, he's still coming for me. I must go on. How long he ran, how far, he didn't know. But he suddenly saw it, a hospital. A haven of refuge from the terror that pursued him. Help me, for heaven's sake. Please help me. After what seemed like an eternity, he found himself a hospital bed. Every time the door opened, he started in fear, his eyes bulging. Oh, oh, it's you. There's a Mr. Manning outside to see you. Shall I send him in? Is it Manning or is it him? Manning, it is you. The Lunk, he's after me. He's trying to prevent me from writing the last chapter. 
Good heavens, John, get a hold of yourself. What is all this gibberish? Calm down. It's true. I tell you, I saw him. I must kill him off. I must destroy him. It's the only way. All right, all right. Have it your way. But those arms, John, how can you write with a pair of broken arms? And that deadline. I uh, will never make it now. My arms, of course. He did it. He wanted to prevent me from destroying him. But I'll do it. Get me a girl. Someone who can take dictation. I'll finish the book that way. Hurry! Yes, yes. Only calm yourself. Try to rest. And I'll have them send a stenographer. Now he felt more at ease. The girl would soon be here. The last chapter written. That would be the end of the lunk. But as the minutes slowly ticked away. Where is that girl? She should be here by now. Meanwhile. Excuse me. I'm looking for room 204. Mr. Wilde. Mr. Wilde's room is right around the corner. <coughs> he heard it. That awesome scream that filled him with a nameless terror. It was a scream such as only the lunk could inspire. He dashed for the door. He's back. I know it. The knife. Always the knife. His favorite weapon. He couldn't let her come to take dictation. Yes, the knife. It serves a very useful purpose, Mr. Wilde. But you should know, you created it for me. But I trust they won't blame this on you. Ah! Help! Stop him! Was there no escape? He felt himself a pawn of the lunk. He began to flee wildly in terror. He's after me! Don't let him touch me! Stop that man! Stop him! Easy now! No one's going to hurt you! Hold him, Doc! He's out of his mind! He just knifed a girl back there! No, no, I didn't do it. The lunk did it. The lunk. Get a straight jacket. He's blown his top. He struggled and screamed, his eyes wildly beseeching, but it was no use. His babblings made no sense. What's he screaming about, a lunk? Who is the character? It's just somebody he writes about. Come on, let's get him in that padded cell. The lunk did it, I tell you. He'll come here too. Sure, sure. Just take it easy. He was alone now. But was he? I know you're here. Why don't you show yourself? Curse you! Of course, but soon you'll be gone forever, while I roam as a free spirit. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? And you thought to destroy me. I will. I will. No, only I will write the last chapter. I am invincible. But your own time has come. Come now, it's no use fighting the inevitable. Help! Help me! Ah! <laughs> oh, bother. What now? Yes, this is Mr. Manning. Wild dead? But how? Don't be stupid, man. How could he commit suicide with a straitjacket on him? Yes. What about the knife? A bone-handled knife? Weakly, he dropped the phone back on its cradle. An eeriness seemed to fill the room as if another presence was there, an unnatural presence. And then he saw it. Great Scott, the last chapter of John's book. But it wasn't there a few minutes ago. I am dead, as dead as I can ever be. But death has come by my own hand. I am supreme. I did not know that to kill the mind that created me was my own death. Signed, The Lunk. Good heavens, could John have been right? Ha ha ha! The lunk! Help! Ha ha ha!